there? Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show to you, my YouTube buddies. Today, we're talking about nutrient deficiencies when you're using Nectar for the Gods, how to diagnose them, and how to deal with them, how to cure them. And this will be part one of a four-part series where we're going to be talking about, first of all, do you actually have a deficiency? Or is it some sort of lockout situation? What's going on there? The second one, we're going to be looking at specific nutrient deficiencies of specific minerals, how to tell which one it is and how to deal with it. Third part will be an overall how to do it step by step. And then the fourth part is going to be kind of interesting. We're going to be talking about bloom chaos, Herculean harvest, and about when you create your own deficiencies through pushing really hard, how to deal with that. So it should be pretty fun. We got Tim McCormick from Culture Biologics. He's our guy, he's one of our experts. He's one that's gonna be doing this, uh, it'll be like a little interview with him. That video's coming up in just a second, so watch that. This is part one. I'll talk to you after the video. Hey there, we're here with Tim. It's exciting. So Tim, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. We've been talking a little bit about deficiencies. The whole thing started with someone saying, hey, I don't see any magnesium in the Nectar for the Gods line. Uh, do I need a mag blast, a mag amp, a mag something or other? And um, basically the question that was maybe, but probably not because you're actually getting that from somewhere else, which brought up the bigger picture to me of when people feel like they have a deficiency, that it may not in fact be a deficiency. It may be the plant's not getting it, but it may be down here, it's not getting up here. I wanted to talk to you about deficiencies. Mm -hmm in how let's just let's just try to like start from the start what is sure. the start of that if you're uh, with the topic of deficiencies in plant growth well i first make sure you have a deficiency um, like you said sometimes it can be in the soil just not being taken up by the plant and the plant can be locked oh, okay. out so lockouts um, can also look like deficiency so first and foremost it's important to, dif to differentiate to make sure you know if it's a lockout or a deficiency okay so What's a lockout? A uh, lockout is when your pH is thrown off or uh, one of the variables in your soil is thrown off, like too many, too much stuff is built up inside your soil and now the plant is locked out from getting all the proper nutrition it needs. It, doesn't, it can't get access to it. There's, a, there's like a gate in the way and it can't, it's plugging up the elements from going into the plant. So it, it's, it's either A, the, the pH is not right for the plant to take it up, mm -hmm. or B, C, D, E, F, that there's something blocking the path by having a too, mu an, a, too much of an abundance of something else, right. or maybe there are chemical reactions that made these all things kind of get into bigger elements and not into the little smile elements the plant needs to to eat. Is that is that a, a layman's way of saying that? Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, so now how do I tell if I have a lockout and not a deficiency? Slurries. Slurries is your only way. You have to take a one-to-one -one sample, like one shot glass of soil to one shot glass of water, okay. mix them together, test it with your pH pen in your part per million. That tells you what the pH in part per million of your soil is. Oh, so do okay. that, uh -huh. figure out if your pH is in the good zone or if your part per million is in the good zone. If either one of them off, you know it's not in the deficiency, you know it's a lockout. So if you, okay. for example, if you have your pH of your soil is 5.6, okay. it's not that you don't have any nutrients in your soil, it's the fact that the plant is at such a low pH inside uh -huh. the soil that it doesn't have access uh, okay. to, the, to the elements like magnesium in your soil. So I may or may not have a deficiency, but it's irrelevant because I, it couldn't get it even if it was there. It was there. Oh, so. okay, okay. So I, now I've got a video what Scott did where we did a slurry test. So I'm going to put a link to that in the description of how you do a slurry test, what a slurry test is. So let's just say I've done my slurry test. What have I, I, I found going on there? What, how does that all... It just uh, depends on your slurry test itself. If you have right. acidic pH with a uh, low pH with a really high PPM, you're probably going to need to flush. If okay. you just have your PPM is on, your pH is on point, and your PPM is really low, you're probably deficient of something. So it just requires okay. you, as the grower, to know what you're looking at and what you need to do from okay, there. Okay, so and you would some people that's EC can be what that's called or PPM, EC. and that's parts per million uh -huh. of uh, soluble salt type. Yeah. nutrient things that could go up into the plant mm -hmm. how much of that's in there and if you feel that if you've got tons of that in there and you look at your plant and it appears that your plant is starving you got a problem it's not getting up it's here there's something down there it could eat right but it can't eat it because of the of the the ppm so step one yes. is make sure your ph is on point step okay. two make sure your part per million to there okay, okay so let's just now i would say that when you're doing interviews with the ppm and the, the ph meters that it's not exactly like you're looking for an exact number you're looking for trends and you're looking for vast variances because it's going to vary from time to time when you do those things so you're looking at the big picture of, of, of it going up or going down kind of thing but just ballpark figures what would i be looking at for my ph is out of whack or my ph is in 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 form sure uh, the inline good ph's are 6.2 to 6.8 
Okay. Anything in between there, you're you're doing good. Okay. Um, Nothing. Your your pH isn't locking you out from anything. Okay. Um, a bad pH would be like seven point five. Okay. Or it could be anything under 6.2. So 5.9 is a pH in your soil that can prevent the magnesium or calcium oh, or nitrogen okay. from getting into your plant. So one thing, a couple things. One, that's if I'm using nectar for the gods. If I was using some other uh, salt-based nutrients, that kind of thing, where would those numbers be? Uh, depends on That's how you're pH. growing. If okay. you're in hydroponics, like you're using rock wool or something uh -huh. like uh -huh. that, it's 5.5 to 5.8 is your your comfort zone. If you're using cocoa with salt nutrients, it's 6.0 to, to 6.8 pretty much is okay. Your, okay. Your, your line. All right, um, so let's get into this then. So I, my, let's say my pH is a little low, mm -hmm. but my, we're, okay, we'll just, we'll, let's just, before we do that, the PPM, where are my PPM be? So your part per million wants to be anywhere from 200 to 400 part per million in your soil. Okay. Anything above that is going to be causing a buildup of, of food, and that's going to cause different things to react and antagonize with each other. Um, anything below 200 shows that your plant's hungry. It okay. shows that you need to put more, more food in there, in there, whether it's magnesium, whether it's nitrogen, whether it's a couple different things. You need to add more food. Okay. Um, 200 to 400 is your sweet spot, though. Okay, so let's say I'm at 200 to 400 on my PPM, but uh, I got a low pH. Mm -hmm. What am I doing to fix that? Um, you're going to do Herc Flush. Okay. Herc Flush is what your tool that you're going to be using. Okay. Um, you're going to use Herculean Harvest and the Olympus Up. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my Olympus up to adjust this to what kind of pH? Am I going to go a little high to try to pull it up? Is that yeah, how that if, works? If it's low, you want to go a little bit higher. So it's 5.8. I usually like to go 6.6 .6 to 6.8 to kind of okay. balance it. So if everything was in, in line, I'd probably be 6.2 is what I'd be shooting for, 6.3. Yep. But I'm trying to bring it up, so I want to go a little higher a little to make higher, that go higher. Because you're buffering out the, the acidity. Okay. So next question. Mm -hmm. I'm at two to 400 on my PPM, yep. but I'm high on my pH. What do I do? You want to, again, use the, the Herc Flush, but you want to bring it more acidic. So you want to give the Herc Flush at like 6.0, and that okay, will bring so the pH down. Would I use, always use some of this, or? Yes, a, a little, you always little, get a little bit of just that. Just some this of is, that. This is like 3.5 to 4.5 so pH have some by to get itself. That. So like naturally, you're going to want some You got to do balance. some. So and it's a limestone that goes into your soil that conditions your soil to a certain level. So oh, okay. you want to put the lime, it's part of the main thing about nectar is making sure you get this limestone down into the soil because it doesn't just do the water, it buffers your entire oh, soil, okay. the soil conditioner. So if I had some high pH water I was working with and my mixture here was coming up real high without this, I'd probably want to uh, Hades this down yeah. so I could still get some some up in there. Yep, and sometimes like uh, high alkaline waters, you want to bring them down before you start adding products to kind of stabilize the pH of the water first. Okay. So it's, it's about just knowing what you're working with, knowing how you're going to address things the slurry is your eyes and let you know if you have a lockout or if you have a deficiency though okay so as far as if I have the pH to adjust I'm going with these products and I'm trying to, I'm not going crazy I'm not putting this at four to bring my pH down or not right. putting it at eight to bring my pH up right. I'm still within range but I'm I'm going to the top or the bottom of that range to bring it out and the flush is going to do a lot of the mechanism of getting that 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 in line it holds a whole if you have a high part per million it brings your part per million down if you have a lower or high pH it helps stabilize your pH in the range you need it to be okay Herc and Ollie are your 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 tools for um, for any, diagnosing any issues. Okay. okay. So just, just first and foremost, don't go throwing the kitchen sink at a problem because right. you see an issue. The first oh, step okay. is to diagnose. The first step is to understand what we're doing. Then from there, once you understand what's going on in your soil, then it's either using corrective action, whether that's foliar okay. spraying, whether that's flushing, or whether that's using different supplements. Okay, so let's just say um, I go in there, my pH is solid, it's 6.3, 6.4, it's, it's, it's in range. Right. But my PPMs are 700 or 5, I mean, they're, they're way up there. What am I doing then? Am I still doing a flush? Yep, still doing a flush, and you're bringing those pH, those good part per million down. I would just be real neutral on my pH number. Yeah, I would sure be you, doing... you want to put your pH number the same as your soil. So if you have a 6.4 pH inside your soil, but like 600 part per million, still make your hurt flush at 6.4, keep okay. the same pH. Uh -huh. But what that's going to do is after one or two hurt flushes, you're going to see the part per million go from 600 down to 500 down to 400. And so you'll see it slowly, slowly start to work its way down as and, it binds to all the... And all you're the saying stuff. with any of this stuff I'm doing, I'm doing it within moderation. I'm not going nuts with right. doing three gallons of this or this. I'm just, I'm just trying to, to, I'm trying to bring it back into line. 
the, the normal flush is about 30, 30 milliliters of Herc per gallon. Okay. Um, and a couple splashes of this okay. per gallon. Would you be doing any kind of foliar feeding to bottle feed your plants while you're getting it back in you line? You can. And so okay. if you're if you are deficient, you know, you say your pH is perfect, uh -huh. but your part per million is 100. Okay. You know, it's way real, real, real low. That okay. lets you know that you don't have the food there. There's nothing there. Yeah. Probably hungry. You're probably low on nitrogen. You're probably low on magnesium. And it's going to take a while to fix. And it's going to take a little bit to fix. Okay. So you just rely on the root zone. Uh -huh. So what we can do to aid in getting the plant some food mm -hmm. is we can foyer spray with you know um, the so green up for the green up recipe from uh, the nectar Bible okay you can uh, foyer spray with Pegasus potion if you need a nitrogen boost okay, okay. Um, even foyer spraying with trigger will give you a nitrogen boost okay. um, but it, yeah foyer spraying will give the leaves it gives the plant some food before the roots can take it off I got gotcha. you just to get it through just kind of like when you get like a root shock situation when you replant you want to be feeding through the the leaves until you can get it get going down down below again exactly okay so it sounds like what we've done here is we figured out that either a we have a lockout and we've dealt with it and we're good to go or B our numbers are solid, but our plant's still not happy. What then? Uh, you want to make sure that your part per million are in a good range. Okay. And then from there, you want to look at the plant because and, and kind of understand what the plant needs. Okay. It doesn't speak English, but the yeah. plant will speak to you if you listen. So like that okay. gives you some tell to some tall tale signs. So okay. um, for example, if my uh, uh, pH is on point, you know, my part per million is on point, but I just have some type of tiger striping on the leaves. Okay. You know, the, the, where it goes green, yellow, green, yellow on the leaf right, itself. Okay. That tells me the plant needs a little bit more magnesium. Okay. Some plants, you know, yeah, need yeah, more yeah. magnesium. And there's a couple ways you can, uh, once you look at it and you can see it, and you're like, oh, that's a magnesium issue. You know, okay. you can then um, spray a magnesium product on the foliage. Right. You can uh, do an Epsom salt drench, or if you know you're about to, all your strains that you grow are heavy magnesium feeders, uh -huh. uh, like Scott okay, said, okay. you can put Epsom salts into your soil ahead of time and that will give you a nice buffer for okay. magnesium charge. Well, let's call this episode figuring out if we have a deficiency and then can, we'll do another. Let's, so we'll, can we get deep into what those symptoms be, how I find those symptoms and how I deal with those symptoms? Yeah, let's talk about the specific elements okay. and what they look like. If you, you are deficient, we can go over the different signs. Okay, so that's today. Tomorrow we're going to talk about how you figure out what's going on and how to fix it. Okay, so that was pretty fun. I enjoyed that. I hope you did. hope you found it informative. I think we covered it pretty well, but if you have any questions, put them in the comments and we'll address those. And we'll be talking about specific nutrient deficiencies in the next video in this series and how to deal with them. So I look forward to seeing you then. The OCG Fam Show. It's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you next time.